you and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Meekness, long-suffering, 
forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Here ended the epistle. Thanks thanks be to God. God.
and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who came on the cross. And I believe on the holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. today after coffee hour. So that's back to back annual meeting last week, best meeting this week. And Wednesday mass noon, uh, St. Cyril Alexandria, bishop, confessor, and doctor of the church. Um, I think you'll all agree it was a great potluck. I'm not going to read what I put in there back to you. I don't know who my speechwriter is. But, well, I, it was great. It was Our potluck's just come together. That's a wonderful thing. Always a pleasure to uh, yield the pulpit to someone else. Um, doesn't happen too often. But today that person is the one and only Dr. Paul Knupp, who has written his own sermon as he is licensed to do. And uh, I hope you'll find it edifying, and I hope we'll all find it edifying. Thank you, Father Brad. The text I'm going to preach about today is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Whenever a loved one of ours died, we experienced the Lord in a new way. I have said goodbye to both my parents and my two younger brothers. When I was 18 years old, my grandma, Edna Drake Canup, died at the age of 89. She had 11 children. She had lived with us for 10 years. Her funeral was huge. We counted her family, and she had 105 direct descendants. We had a celebration of life for her funeral. I learned to see the Lord as the giver of life and the king of blessings. A few years ago, a few years ago, my brother Bruce died, and uh, he was my best friend. I grew up with him. We did a lot of things together. And that was very hard, but he was the toughest person I'd ever met. Just tough. I mean, he could withstand pain like I've never seen. And I, seen, I, I saw Brachesis on the football field when he hit people and hit them so hard on the field, he ended up on a fence surrounding the, the stadium. And uh, he was just that tough. And when he died, he died pretty suddenly in the, in the doctor's office. He had uh, lung cancer, and uh, he succumbed to it. So I learned in that death, I saw the Lord as the overcomer of all that we think is strong. That no matter what we think is wonderful and strong, the Lord surpasses that and can incorporate that into his being. King Isaiah of, Ju of Judea had a strong and long and distinguished reign. So 
described in 2 Chronicles 26 and in 2 Kings 15, he is called Azariah in 2 Kings 15. Uzziah began his reign when he was only 16 years old. And he reigned 52 years. Overall, he was a good king. And 2 Kings said he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. <clears throat> Second Chronicles goes on to say, he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Uzziah also led Israel in military victories over the Philistines and over neighboring nations. And he was a strong king. Uzziah was an energetic builder, planner, and general. Second Chronicles 26 said, his fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, where he strengthened himself exceedingly. But Uzziah and Uzziah's life ended tragically. When he was sitting, when he was strong in his heart and was lifted up, it was to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense, which was only supposed to be for the priest to do. In response, God struck Uzziah with leprosy, and he was an isolated leper until his death. So to say in the year King Uzziah died is to say, lot. It is to say in the year a great and wise king died. But it is also to say in the year a great and wise king who had a tragic end died. Isaiah had great reason to be discouraged and disillusioned at the death of King Uzziah because a great king had passed away and because his life ended tragically. Where was the Lord in all this? When I was 21 years old, I said goodbye to my beloved cousin Kay. We were born a week apart, and we spent a lot of time growing up together. In our uh, inf infancy naivete, we planned to get married when we were adults. She contracted a lymphoma. I went to her home to pray with her. Her brothers, Roger and Mark, my cousins, were also present. As we prayed, a smoky wisp appeared in the room. I was skeptical, so I asked Roger and Mark, do you see that? And he fearfully answered, yes, what is it? I told him I thought it was the Lord. We finished praying and the wisp had dissipated. I was sure Kay was healed. A month later, she died. I was furious with the Lord. I yelled at the Lord for taking my cousin. Eventually, I came to see that I was not the distributor of the Lord's blessing. Every close death is an opportunity to learn about the Lord. In the year prior to my father's death, three of his brothers died. I can imagine he seriously contemplated their deaths. I imagine he saw the Lord in a new way and it prepared him for his own passing. Now for us, let us revisit the deaths of our loved ones. How did our notions of the Lord grow or change? How did we see the Lord in a new way? These visions will not only comfort us, comfort our loss, but prepare us for our own deaths. In fact, contemplating the death of Christ will lead to our salvation as we see Christ in heaven with his Father. The wine and the host are not symbols. They are the body and the blood of our Lord. As St. Paul wrote, discern the body. Seeing Christ crucified, resurrected, and ascended is the vision available to us in the taking of the body and the bread. In the
and blood. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 